Today, as we've talked about truth, it strikes me that uh, maybe not all of us, maybe all of us have, but maybe not all of us have come to the realization of the truth regarding salvation. There is nobody that gets to heaven by going to a church, by being baptized, by participating in the Lord's Supper, by doing anything at all, but making a decision to establish a personal relationship with Christ. And in some respects, I don't like that term, a personal relationship with Christ, because everybody has one. Do you know that? Everybody has a personal relationship with Christ. Because one day everybody's going to face Christ. Some for condemnation and others for salvation. So everybody has a personal relationship. But what kind of a personal relationship do you have? Do you have the personal relationship of enemy? As described in Romans 5, 9, and 10? Or do you have a personal relationship as a friend, as a child of God? What's your relationship like? That's the issue. And depending on what our relationship is like is going to determine where we spend the rest of eternity once we die. And death is a very real thing. All of us know that. All of us have had loved ones who have died. And it's a very real occurrence. Nobody escapes it. And so today, I'd like us all to just to close our eyes for a moment. And as you sit in your seat, ask yourself this question. If I were to die today, where would I spend the rest of eternity? And if your answer is, I don't know, or if your answer is, I for sure I wouldn't spend it in heaven, this is your opportunity to rectify that. And you can do that simply by asking Jesus Christ to not, not only be um, someone that you call upon when you're in trouble, but to actually become the Lord of your life, the Savior of your soul. On the other hand, there may be somebody who says, well, I, I know I'd go to heaven. How do you know? Because you prayed a prayer one day? Is salvation based on prayer? No. Salvation is based on Jesus dying on a cross, on an old rugged cross on Calvary. Salvation is based on His blood having dripped from His wounds to cleanse away our sins forever. And it's based on God's grace giving us what we didn't deserve and His mercy sparing us from all of that and then giving us the faith to believe. And so, when we ask Him to forgive our sins and to take control of our life, He then saves our soul from hell. And that's how we become saved. So today, if there's anyone here who has any kind of doubt regarding whether or not you'd go to heaven, I invite you to pray. Again, it's not the prayer. It's the sincerity of your heart. It's how much you mean it. Because you could pray a thousand prayers and they would do no good if you didn't mean them. You could pray a million prayers and the same would be true. But you can pray one short prayer. Remember the, remember the, the, the thief on the cross? Lord, remember me. Remember me when you're in your kingdom. He didn't go into all of the sins and everything else and on and on and on. He didn't give some theolo deep theological explanation or anything. He just said, just remember me when you're in the kingdom. And what did Jesus say? Ah, oh, you didn't quite make it, buddy. You need to do this and you need to do that and you need to go to church. You need he didn't do that. Today, you will be with me in paradise. So today, by praying a simple prayer with all sincerity and meaning, you can join God in heaven. Isn't that great? With that in mind, I'm going to pray a prayer. And if you'll pray that prayer, 
He will listen to you just as he did to that dying villain on the cross. Pray with me to yourself. Pray this. Dear Father, I know I'm a sinner. I know I need forgiveness to get into heaven. Would you please forgive all of my sins, those of my past, my present, and my future? All of them. And would you please send your Holy Spirit into my life? I want Jesus Christ, your Son, to be the Lord of my life. To be the controller of all of my being. To be the savior of my soul. And I thank you for Jesus Christ having died on the cross. Please, Lord, save me. Because I want to go to heaven when I die or when you come back whichever comes first. In Jesus' name I pray. Father, today, I would pray that if there was somebody here who has prayed that prayer, and maybe they've been coming here for a while, maybe everybody thinks they're a Christian, but they've realized today that maybe that's not true. And today they've made a recommitment or maybe for the first time prayed that you would become the Lord and Savior of their life. I pray that those people would come down. That putting aside embarrassment of others thinking they are already Christians or anything else, that they would come down and just shake my hand and say, Pastor, I, I prayed. And now I know I'm going to heaven. Not because I prayed, not because I came forward, but because I meant my prayer. And I gave Jesus Christ my life. So Father, bless those who, if anyone, prayed that prayer right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We're going to sing uh, softly and tenderly, and we're going to sing the first, second, and fourth verses. And that'll give you opportunity to come down. And the music isn't intended to move your emotions. The music is intended as a worshipful time when we can hear the cry of God to your soul and, and, and saying, come on down. Because I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for you. So let's, let's go ahead and sing, Mike, and, uh, and hopefully somebody will come down. And if not, that's okay, too. Maybe you just need prayer for something. And I know that uh, this church has been assailed and afflicted by so many uh, of, of our beloved uh, brothers and sisters that have been afflicted with things. And, and uh, man, uh, there's a whole list of them, and you know them. And, and uh, so um, just uh, come on down and... and uh, and, and if you have some need for prayer, just let me know. I need prayer for this. And I'll pray for you. Okay? So let, let's sing. <laughs> 